Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll tell you what, I couldn't be more excited to do today's review of the K Luke Barrel Strength Batch 5. For me, Batch 4 was absolutely fantastic. The question is, will Batch 5 meet or exceed Batch 4? Only one way to find out. Let's talk about that today on the My Bourbon Journey Whiskey Review Channel. Let's do this. Hey guys, again, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. So like I mentioned before, we're talking K-Luke Barrel Strength Batch 5. So coming off of 4, I was curious to know or find out how really Batch 5 will be coming off of, again, Batch 4 and how fantastic of a blend that really was. So what do you say we dive into it? I'll share a little bit of the specs with you right now as to what the Barrel Strength Batch 5 K-Luke is all about. So the K-Luke Barrel Strength Batch 5 is coming in at 119.4 proof or 59.7% ABV. It is a blend of both Kentucky and Indiana, both high and low rye mash bills. It's non-age stated and the MSRP on this one's coming in at right around $115. So I think as we get into it, you'll see hopefully that price point will translate and in terms of value be worth it uh, to you. So what do you say we go ahead and dive into today's review? So color wise, as you can see, beautiful kind of rich, you know, copper type of color. Again, move the whiskey around in the glass. Again, they're non-chill filtering uh, any of that. So this is pretty much the bourbon in its purest form. So again, beautiful oils. Hopefully, ultimately, that will all translate uh, over to the palate. So let's go ahead and get into the nose. So for me right away, there's this beautiful, beautiful, like salted caramel pecan kind of note. Really beautiful, rich vanilla custard. Very thick, it smells like at this point. A little bit of that orange zest that I tend to pick up oftentimes uh, from the MGP or Indiana uh, bourbon. Nice medium oak, but what I'll say is this oak feels like to me after a barrel has been freshly dumped that intense oak smell that you get. There's just that rich, like wet bourbon soaked uh, wood. I'm getting all of that. Fantastic or beautiful baking spices on that. Lots of cinnamon, lots of nutmeg, little hint of a black pepper on that as well. It's very bright, fresh. And again, it, it smells like a freshly dumped uh, barrel of bourbon. Little bit of those kind of honey notes, but the honey note for me almost comes across as like a, a charred honeycomb, or if you kind of put some kind of flame, you know, to honey, what that would maybe smell like. Also a little bit of a, like a cinnamon caramel apple uh, effect to that again. Um, I know early on I was getting kind of that, that salted caramel pecan, but now kind of on the, the back end part of it, I'm getting a little bit of that kind of caramel apple with maybe some cinnamon or cinnamon sugar kind of note on that. Beautiful nose so far, rich, complex, not overly sweet, but it smells very well blended so far. So what do you say we give this one a try and see how this compares ultimately to batch number four? Cheers, guys. So for me, again, right out of the gate, salted caramel pecan, maybe a hint of like a, a pie crust. So far, like immediately, even off of the first sip, there's this richness, there's this decadence about it so far. So we'll see really how this thing kind of develops as we get into it here a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more of that kind of like orange peel or like an orange zest starting to kind of come out. Again, oftentimes that's something I pick up from, you know, some of the MGP or Indiana bourbons. Just a little hint of that, that orange zest. And, and maybe there's even a hint of it being like a, like a charred or like a burnt orange, something along those lines. So if you just hit like that little, the orange rind with a little bit of flame, you get maybe a little bit more of that, that intensity or richness uh, of that orange to it. And here's what I'll also say. So like I was getting on the nose, that like fresh or like wet bourbon soaked wood just shortly after a barrel has been dumped, 
It smells very intense. That taste is, is what I'm kind of picking up here. It, it smells and tastes incredibly rich, just like a freshly dumped uh, barrel of bourbon. One thing I don't wanna lose sight of is the mouthfeel. It's rich, it's creamy, velvety, coats the mouth extremely well. It's really allowing for all of those flavors to develop you know, all over the entire palate. There is also this kind of slight baker's chocolate. I wouldn't say it's quite milk chocolate or even a dark chocolate. There's a little bit more of that kind of, you know, I don't wanna say, you know, there's just, there's just more of that kind of baker's chocolate where it's not overly sweet, but you're still getting a little bit of that, that chocolate profile. Oftentimes you can get that from like a, a cocoa powder where it's maybe not overly sweet. Um, so I am picking up a little bit of that chocolate note, but without it again being overly sweet. So the more I've continued to sip on it, here's where I think a little bit more of the, of the decadence is starting to come out in this. Like early on on the nose, I got a little bit of that pie crust. That's starting to come out a little bit more on the palate. So it's starting to become a little bit more richer, decadent. Actually, the chocolate now is starting to slightly change. It's getting a little bit sweeter, more of that kind of like burnt orange, a little bit of like a burnt honey uh, note to it. So there are definitely some barrel influences. You know, also going back to the very beginning when I got that kind of like salted caramel pecan kind of note, it's definitely that. So it's very layered so far. So I think early on, you get more of those kind of like decadent type of notes where as you move into it a little bit, more of the sweeter kind of richer notes kind of start to come through a little bit. So it's a very interesting palette so far, slightly different than, than batch four, but definitely on par with batch four. Yeah, really nice kind of burnt sugars maybe to the point where it's starting to like almost slightly caramelize. Again, love the baking spice that's on it. Again, that nice freshly dumped barrel um, kind of note is coming through. Absolutely love the burnt honey note that's really starting to kind of come through on this. More of those caramels, a little bit more of the pecan. It's got an awful lot going on. And I think, again, this is one of those bourbons that as you sit down with it, the longer you kind of take with it, I think the longer and more kind of different profiles you'll pull out of it, which is something I absolutely love about a, a really well blended bourbon. Again, you're blending both Kentucky and Indiana bourbons together. And I think again, what it is that, that Jonathan and his wife are doing, putting these blends together has kind of really put them on the map of, of a brand that really you know, that you need to be paying attention to and rightfully so. Again, you know, starting with, you know, from batch three now to four and now to five, you know, they're really continuing to just get better, blends continue to get better, maybe slightly different. And again, I don't want to use the term, I guess, necessarily better. They're just changing or evolving. They're, they're different, I should say. So, and that's always a great thing about each blend is that they should be somewhat different uh, especially when you're you're dealing with something that's a low volume, you know you're gonna get some different profiles. And so far, batch five for me is is fantastic, but slightly different than batch four. But one of the other things I'll say about this is I'm getting a little bit more of the the corn component uh, to this, so it's more coming across as like a a buttered cornbread, something along those lines, you know. But still, it's still remaining very rich, decadent, layered. It's something that you feel like you just want to take your time with and simply enjoy. The proof on this, I would say, could kind of trick you a little bit. I don't think it's drinking quite like 119 plus proof. It feels a little bit less than that, but still maintaining its overall like richness and complexity. Those long lingering baking spices have also remained moved all the way through, you know, into the finish part of it. So, I mean, it's made this finish very long. It's developing, it's continuing to just evolve as I continue to sip on this. So for me, this is one of those whiskeys that 
I would say just take your time with it. I think the layers that it has will continuously evolve, maybe change, give you some some different kind of tasting notes uh, throughout it. So, you know, finish wise, I'm going to say this is all of you know, medium plus, maybe even into that long category. I think you've got a lot of those just lingering, you know, baking spices, the pecan, that salted caramel that's there, a little bit of the orange, charred honey, freshly dumped uh, barrel note. So an awful lot really going on with this whiskey. And again, this would be one that I would say to anybody, just take your time, slow down with this. You'll ultimately be rewarded in the end as you continuously uh, enjoy this pour. So my overall thoughts in terms of my recommendation, would I buy it? Yes, I think in today's market at $115 for what this is, I think it's an incredible blend. Again, Kentucky, Indiana bourbons, both high and low rye. I think Jonathan and his wife have done an, an incredible job you know, with this one. So. I wouldn't hesitate if you are one of the lucky ones that that have or see batch five, uh, or I'll even say batch four, they're, they're all by recommendations for me. So uh, there you have it. This is the batch five K Luke barrel strength bourbon. Uh, again, if you see it, I'll say just buy it. It's a really fantastic blend and one that I think you'll ultimately enjoy uh, sipping on uh, over the period of time that you're able to have it. It's a very, very easy sipping uh, bourbon. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to follow me, you can on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of those places at My Bourbon Journey. If you'd like to help support the channel and become part of the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club, make sure you check out the Patreon link and other links in the description below. A lot of great things down there for you as well. So with that being said, thank you guys. And remember, it's about the journey and not the destination. Cheers. It's the feels you give to me uh, yeah. It's the feels you give to me oh. One step, two pace, taking our time